So we can have it for, you know, future. All right. Is there any, any questions up front? No. Do you want me to start on the list uh, from 1 to 100? <laughs> All right. Well, why don't I why don't I just start at the beginning and then and then we'll go we'll just go through it. So when you when you look at when you look at the Studio Press website, you're going to see your home screen like this. So we're going to go over the core functionality of the site. The other thing that I did do, I just want to show you real quick, is on the Profound website. I added, there are six tutorials that are probably more in depth than what Studio Press has to offer in services and then Agent Press tutorials. And I've got them all lined up here. I don't know if you guys saw that, but they'll be here if you want to go back and look at those. Okay. All right. Thank you. So here's the Agent Press website. This is where I've logged in. There we go. Okay. All right. So to do the to do the slider, Scott, did, did, were you able to see how that works? Uh, honestly, no. This is my first weekend that I'm going to be dedicated to the website. Okay. No, no problem. So what you want to do for the slider is. Um, where is that? So the one the first thing you need to make to to check is that in the theme settings. Oop, I gotta log in. That this setting here, enable the slider, is checked. So then to have the the images show up, you need to put them in a category. Now I just created a category called featured properties. And the, and the only, you could call it slider pictures, whatever you want to call it to have those show up here on the slider. And I'll show you where you do that. Uh, you can also, right now I have it set to four. If you want to increase it to more, you can just, you know, increase the number of posts here. You can also increase how long the slides stay up. Right now I have it set to 6,000, which there's a thousand milliseconds to a second. So they stay up for six seconds before they move to the next one. Or maybe you want to slow the transition speed down so you would increase this number here. And you can just play around with that to your liking. So then you so then to look at posts, well let's just make let's let's make a new one. So that's uh, I'm gonna make it five just for fun. So we'll save, save the settings. It's probably the most common mistake is people come in here and make a change and then they go click on something else without saving. So I just want to make sure that happens. All right. So if you, if you see here, these are the featured properties, which is the same as that uh, selection I made where, where it had enabled the slider. And you can see the image, and there's some dummy text I put in. So this is 12 Sweetwater Street, so let's go back here. That's not it. If, if the image is too small, you'll, it'll look like that. That's, if, you get, if it doesn't fit, there it is, 12 Sweetwater Street. That's what it looks like. So now, one thing to be aware of is when you put this picture in, this is actually a larger picture. Uh, WordPress will resize it for you. So I can actually take this out of here. And let's put it back in. And we can see the actual full size image is 960 by 370. But the one that I originally had in here in this post was 300 by 115. So it, if, if your picture, you need, it needs to be at least 920 pixels wide for it to fit on that slider. 
But again, if, to show it in this post, like I, let's just put it, let me, let me put it back in here. Uh, let me save it. Now, if I look at this post, see how the picture is small here, but when I look on the slider, it's big because WordPress is automatically resizing it for me. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now this is definitely the, the advanced theme. So, you know, I just want to invite you to, you know, you might struggle with it a little bit, but that's part of the learning process and you only have to learn this once. And it's, it, to me, this is probably the most powerful SEO theme that I've seen in, you know, I've been doing this for a couple of years now that's out there. I mean, there's some really cool stuff you can do with the listings that we're going to look at. Um, all right. So the other thing I want to look at was how do you configure the e-news and updates area? Now, th this, this is uh, something that you put a feed burner feed in. And, and what that does is somebody subscribe, puts their email address in here. Anytime you have a new listing or a new article, they're going to get it. And probably what people are going to want would be new, you know, properties. I, usually that's what people are looking for in real estate. So this is all handled in a widget. Everything on the sidebar here is what we call a widget. And the widgets are, if we go to the dashboard, to a, the appearance tab here, click on widgets, we can see in the header right, this is the header area here, and this is header right, this widget. And your site's come pre-formatted already. And I put the title in e-news and updates. I can change this, because right now it says e-news and updates. I can just call it get new listings and save it. Refresh. See that? Get new listings. I can change this button. I, you know, if I don't, if I want go, or I can make it whatever I want. Sign up to receive property listings. I can make it sign up to receive new foreclosures. All right. But to make this work, You'll notice on your sites that you don't have the enter your email address does not become live until you put the feed burner uh, ID in. Now I have a video on how to create the feed for the agent press video for the agent press theme. It's very easy to do. All you need to do is go to feedburner.com and you need to burn a feed. Now I've already done one for this and I'm, but basically you just need to uh, put your URL in. So in my case it's the correct structure is like the name of my test website is applyandfly.com and then you need to add forward slash feed forward slash RSS. Uh, I'm not a podcaster, so I'm not going to select that. So, but you do need to have a Google account to be able to make feed burner work. So like if you have, you know, that, would, that just means like you have a Gmail account. Uh, even if you don't use it, you know, to get this, just sign up, just sign up for the feed burner account. Click next. This is all in the video. Uh, I can actually change, you know, I can make a name for my feed. I can call it the foreclosure list for Arizona or I don't know, whatever, whatever, however you want to do it. And this is your feed address right here, which when you click next, you just copy this, 
control C, and this is what gets pasted here. Okay? Okay. Now it's not quite done yet. There's still a couple more steps. Let's see if I can remember. I uh, don't need that. But we do need the... I even forgot. Optimize, not optimize. Yeah. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Okay. Publicize. Oh, email subscriptions right here. So you just click on this and click activate, which I already have one, so I'm not going to click activate. But that's all. That's all you need to do to get a FeedBurner account. And again, it's it's in the video. All right. So let's go back to. All right. Um, the other thing you can do, if you notice in my test site, the default theme for AgentPress does not have like I, I just put a thing about my you know about my firm. One of the things I didn't like about the theme in the default is it's really not a good place where you can put information about what your services are or about what you offer. You can add this in in a and this is in the featured pro there's featured properties and featured posts. This section up top is featured properties, even with this about my firm. And the bottom piece is the featured posts. So you have two different areas there. Uh, but you can also customize those. So here's featured properties. Now you can see that I have the featured posts and about my firm. Now right now the featured posts or feature properties are above the text about my firm. Well, I can change that simply by dragging it just like that. If I come back here, now the text is up, up top here. Pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, how do you take care of uh, key featured properties? Yeah. It's too close. It's too close to the last sentence of about my firm. Yeah, I've got I've got some code that fixes that. So I yeah I, we yeah we can make spacing that fixes that. Actually, I think on yours. It's taken care. Of. Yeah, it's taken care. Of. Anyway, yeah, I have code that fixes that. So. All right. So that that's the nice thing about WordPress is you can customize it that way. And, I, and to get different features into the into these areas, all you have to like if I want a calendar in here, all I have to do is just drag. And now calendar is going to show up. Let's save it. I don't know that you want it, but anyway, calendar. Easy, right? Well, I don't want the calendar there. Let's yeah. delete it. Um, close. Now, your featured post widgets, I've pre-configured them. And right now, I have it that this site is showing four featured properties. Well, maybe I don't want four. It takes up a lot of room. How about just two? I apologize. I just upgraded to Firefox 4, and I'm so I'm used to Firefox 3.6 and the refresh buttons over here. All right, so now yeah, so now we have two. You know, same thing with real estate tips. Maybe I don't want all that information on my homepage. Maybe I just want one or two. So that's the featured posts where it says featured properties. I think just to make it easier, again, there's a featured post widget in here that gives you settings that you can play with. Let's just call this featured post just so it's not confusing. And right now I have three properties showing. One, two, three. Well.